Your assignments are, in a way, a form of communicating, so your document needs to be logically designed, coded, and made up of interdependent parts for sharing information. In this video, we will cover a number of examples of source types cited in the context of an APA student paper. We're going to learn how to cite in the body of the paper using in-text citations, entries in the reference page, and understand the connections between in-text citations and references. Let's consider the general format of a student APA paper, complete with title page, body, and reference page. For details, see the key material that comes with this video. You can also find this information in Chapter 2 of the APA Publication Manual. Check with your course instructor if they require you to format a professional APA paper. Books have great concrete information, like The Healing of America by T. R. Reed. You might decide to paraphrase content from this book based on its narrative form. APA uses the author date system. Use the author's last name and the date of publication for in-text citations. This information is key for your reader's frame of reference. There are two basic ways to cite in your text, parenthetical and narrative. In parenthetical in-text citations, both the author and the date separated by a comma appear within or at the end of a sentence. When a parenthetical citation is at the end of a sentence, put the period or other end punctuation after the closing parentheses. In narrative citations, the author appears in running text and the date appears in parentheses immediately after the author name. For example, you might write, Reed stated thus and such, keeping the publication date next to the author's name. Adding an extra detail like a page or paragraph number can help with paraphrased citations, but it's not required. Direct quotations, on the other hand, do require an additional frame of reference. Now we'll make the connection between the in-text citation and its corresponding reference. We can notice how the author's last name and publication date are keyed to the reference. References are made up of four basic components, author, publication date, title, and source. The author section is formatted with the last name, comma, initials and punctuation. Although the first or middle initials already provide a period, punctuation is more apparent when the author is a group or organization. If there is more than one author, separate the authors with a comma. Write the publication date by year. You might need to add the month or day, depending on the source. The title for a book is italicized and in sentence case. Sentence case means you capitalize the first word of the title and the subtitle, including all proper nouns. The source includes information on its origin and location, such as publisher, journal title, retrieval date, URL, or other details. In this case, the book represents a print copy, but in some cases an ebook might include a DOI. A DOI, or Digital Object Identifier, is a unique alphanumeric string that identifies content and provides a persistent link to its location on the Internet. DOIs apply more to journal articles, so we'll get to that in just a second. Let's use the journal article entitled COVID-19 and Racial Ethnic Disparities by Hooper and others. Let's first consider quotations. Direct quotations are useful for citing information that requires accuracy, like quoting data, definitions, or other observations that need exact wording. Short quotations consist of fewer than 40 words. They are formatted with quotation marks for the text you cite. Here are some examples using parenthetical and narrative in-text citations. Block quotations consist of 40 words or more for citing lengthier direct quotes, and you would use them only when necessary. Block quotes start on a new line, are indented half an inch, double-spaced, and do not require the use of quotation marks. New paragraphs in block quotes get an additional half-inch indentation. You can cite your source in parentheses after the quotation's final punctuation, or you can cite the author and year in the narrative before the quotation and place only the page number in the parentheses after the quotation's final punctuation. Now we'll make the connection between the in-text citation and its corresponding reference. We can notice how the author's last name and publication date are keyed to the reference. This makes it easy to find the reference, which allows the reader to verify the source. For this journal article, cite the authors like we did with the book, 
listing the last names first, followed by the initials, and punctuated. Use the ampersand as a short way of saying and before stating the last author listed. Cite the date of publication by year. Cite the title of the article and sentence case, capitalizing the first word of the title and the first word of the subtitle with all proper nouns, then punctuate. Unlike the book, don't italicize the title of the article. Moving to the source of the reference will include the title of the journal and the DOI, which I'll define very soon. Journal articles have a complex publishing process because they get published frequently and are written by many authors, so using a point of reference requires some detail. For a journal article, include the title of the journal, capitalized and italicized. Include the volume number, italicized directly next to the issue number in parentheses. Add the page range, and if applicable, a URL or a DOI. In this case, the Journal of the American Medical Association doesn't have a volume or issue number to reference, so we'll omit it, but you'll often find those in journal article references. As we mentioned, a DOI, or Digital Object Identifier, is a unique alphanumeric string that identifies content and provides a persistent link to its location on the Internet. DOIs are preferable to use than URLs because URLs tend to change over time, but if you don't have a DOI, use a URL. Let's use the news program entitled, Why Managing Chronic Health Conditions Begins at Home. Since this is a video, direct quotations will be based on material without page numbers. Here are a few examples. You can use a section header in the absence of pages, an abbreviated heading or section gets quotation marks. You can number paragraphs typing para, period, and its number. In audiovisual material like a video, use a timestamp for the beginning of the quotation in place of the page number. Now we'll make the connection between the in-text citation and its corresponding reference. We can notice how the author's last name and publication date are keyed to the reference. This makes it easy to find the reference, which allows the reader to verify the source. For this news program, you could cite the host as you would an author, listing the last name first, followed by initials, and punctuated. You might also cite a director or producer in the author's place, depending on the source. In this citation, I'm going to cite the reporter and note it in the parentheses, because the host is actually Judy Woodruff, but John Yang is reporting in a similar way to authoring a work. Cite the date of publication by year. We'll add the month and day because it's relevant to the timing of its publication. Cite the title of the episode in sentence case, capitalizing only the first word of the title and subtitle, including all proper nouns. Add details like season or episode number if applicable. Since this is a video, we'll want to make this type of media clear to the reader for identifying and retrieving the work. Use bracketed descriptions for noting unconventional types of media. Examples include videos, audiobooks, software, or datasets. When in doubt, use a description. Enclose descriptions in square brackets. Capitalize the first letter and place it after the title of the work. For the source, we'll include the title of the TV series, italicized in sentence case, capitalizing the first word of the title and subtitle, including all proper nouns, then punctuate. Add the production company. In this case, it's the public broadcasting service. Finally, add the URL. We'd normally add the producer before the production company, but this doesn't seem to apply. Now we will work on citing a newspaper magazine titled, Why America's Black Mothers and Babies Are in a Life or Death Crisis. You might notice that magazines or news articles quote other people frequently, but it's not clear how to cite the sources in the paper you're reading from. Ideally, you would want to cite the original source, but this might not be an option or a very fitting choice. So when you quote sources in the flow of an article, simply include the information in the quote as it is and cite only the paper or magazine you're reading from. If you are citing a source in your paper that has quotation marks, use single quotations within the text held by the double quotation marks of your direct quote. 
Now we'll make the connection between the in-text citation and its corresponding reference. This source is an interesting combination between newspaper, magazine, and web page, but since this has the quality of a magazine, we'll cite it as such. Similar to a journal article, a magazine is a type of periodical because it gets published continually or periodically. This reference is pretty straightforward compared to the journal article. Cite the author and date of publication, but we'll add the month and day. The specific date provides an accurate frame of reference because magazines get published more frequently. Cite the title of the article in sentence case and punctuate. Cite the title of the magazine, italicize, capitalize, punctuate, and finally we'll add the URL because we accessed this online. Now you might consider adding a retrieval date because this source was cited from the web, but retrieval dates are more for content that tends to get updated such as a Google map or evidence-based content in Dynamed or clinical guidelines. Now we'll cite a podcast from the channel called All In Data for Community Health Podcast. Perhaps in this podcast, you want to cite a couple of points in a stretch of time, but you don't want to clutter up your paper with a block quote. Consider using three periods or the ellipsis character, an equivalent of three dots indicating the omitting of text. You can use an ellipsis to omit text in sentences or between sentences so you can draw attention to only the content you need to quote while giving the reader awareness of its existing content. Ellipses aren't used at the beginning or end of quotes except if they are part of the quote. You might have noticed that there are four periods in this example, but the first dot is actually a period ending the sentence followed by the ellipsis indicating absent context. The in-text citation follows the author date system, and since this is an audio form of media, we can use timestamps for the in-text citation. I added an extra timestamp for citing the second statement. We'll make the connection between the in-text citation and its corresponding reference. This podcast is essentially an interview, so we'll consider how to cite it accurately and considerately. For podcasts, cite the host in the author's place and indicate the role of the host in parentheses, followed by the date of the podcast publication. Next, cite the title of the podcast episode in sentence case and punctuate. Add the episode number in parentheses. In this case, there is a season number. Add the description, audio podcast episode, in square brackets for the purpose of identification and retrieval. Add the word in, followed by the title of the podcast in sentence case, and italicize. This minor detail using the word in is also used for book chapters, and it helps indicate that the work cited is part of a larger work. Next, cite the production company and capitalize. In this example, the production company is just about the same as the podcast title because it's produced by the same organization. Finally, include the URL. Now I'll add the URL from the organization site because it offers more information on the content, even though the podcast is hosted in SoundCloud. One more important detail I need to mention is that Peter Eckhart, the host, interviewed Josie Williams, the expert voice in the topic, Therefore, you will want to make it clear in the narrative of the paper what Josie Williams stated or what Peter Eckhart asked. Now we will cite reports and gray literature from the Boston Public Health Commission and County Health Rankings and Roadmaps. There are a number of reports such as government reports, technical reports, and research reports. Gray literature includes documents such as press releases, codes of ethics, grants, policy briefs, and similar publications. You might not see authors listed in reports or gray literature the same way you do in a journal article. Often groups or organizations represent their professional documents so you can cite them as the author. The in-text citations will look a little different but that is okay because it's still based on the author date system. 
You might notice in County Health Rankings and Roadmap Source that I used Data Tab. That's because the information on the web page was complex and tabulated. I had to first find the county and then click to the specific data. It would help the reader to know exactly where the data came from. Think of it as another point of reference like a timestamp or paragraph number. Finally, we'll connect the in-text citations to their references. In this example, I needed to cite some data from a map and a figure from the report of the Boston Public Health Commission. I want to point out that this report has 12 authors listed in a preliminary page and three key executives on the cover page, so it's hard to know how to cite authorship. The APA manual states well that sometimes it can be difficult to know whether to credit a group author or the individuals who wrote on behalf of that group. To confirm, consult the cover or title page of the work. If the cover or title page lists only the name of the group and no names of the individuals, treat the references as having a group author. It's clear now that this example should use a group author. Next, the year is placed in parentheses and punctuated. The title of the report is formatted in sentence case, italicized, and punctuated. In this example, sentence case is not apparent because the proper nouns are capitalized. This example also does not have a report number, otherwise it or some other identifying number would be placed in parentheses in regular format. The publisher's name is then placed after the report title, capitalized and punctuated. If the group author is the same as the publisher's name, you can omit the publisher's information. Lastly, the URL finishes the reference. Gray literature consists of a wide variety of documents, such as policy briefs, press releases, grants, and other unique forms of publications. Therefore, descriptions in square brackets might be an appropriate element for this type of reference because it provides your reader with information for easy identification and retrieval. The information cited in this source is collected and distributed by County Health Rankings and Roadmaps and might be best represented as a group author. The publication date is followed in parentheses and punctuated. The title of this gray literature is in sentence case and italicized. If applicable, add a description in square brackets, then punctuate. In this example, our source is described as an online state report, though this could be described as a data set or state data. The point is that the reader should understand the nature of the information for the purpose of identification and retrieval. You'll notice that the publisher's name is the same as the group author, so we can omit the publisher's information. The URL is placed at the end, but because this is an online state report, the content may be subject to regular updates, even though the date is sorted by year. So I added a retrieval date. This way, the reader knows when the information was accessed in case new information is added at a later time. Let's say you need to conduct a couple of personal interviews for an assignment, for example, a telephone interview with a registered nurse, to learn more about the problem of community falls among elders living in the Hyde Park section of Boston. This type of information in APA is referred to as a personal communication, such as an email, telephone conversation, text message, or other. You only need to cite personal communications in the text. The reason for this is because this type of information is not recoverable, at least not for your reader, unless it's archived. Cite the personal communication by adding the interviewee's first initials followed by the last name. Then type the words personal communication in lowercase, followed by date in the parentheses. Citation tools can save you a lot of time. They are particularly helpful with journal articles and books. Here's an example of the Cite button in the CINAHL Library database. Here is an example of the Cite button in our library catalog. This example shows the Citation Tool button in the video database called Canopy. Google Scholar also has a Cite button.
There are very good free citation tools such as Mendeley and Zotero with built-in functions that help you manage and organize your references. Feel free to ask about them, we can help you with that. It's a good idea to quickly check references generated by citation tools because they often produce errors, and that's understandable because references and citation generators are a little complicated. Using the citation button in CINAHL, we can see that the author is not cited correctly. The last name of the article is Hooper. Webb is the middle name. It's possible that the citation generator figured the second listed name as the author's last name. Anyway, we can easily modify this reference to show the last name and initials. The other error is in the title of the journal article, which should be in sentence case. Only the first word of the title and subtitle are capitalized, including all proper nouns. The error also is an easy fix after you copy and paste the reference into your text editor. The Cite button in the library catalog shows the place of publication for a book reference. The information for place of publication isn't necessary in APA, so we can omit it. Moving to the film, you'll see that this copy of the reference from the Canopies database doesn't show anyone in the author's place, and the title of the film should be in sentence case and italicized. The retrieval date is interesting because it involves the database from which this film was viewed, but this won't be necessary. You could manage this citation by adding the director, the series, and a few formatting changes that were mentioned. If you don't see the director's name, try checking the credits at the beginning or end of the film. The Google Scholar Cite button was very accurate for the most part but you'll notice the journal title JAMA should be in all caps as it stands for the Journal of the American Medical Association and it is well known enough for using that acronym. Try not to worry about the minutia of APA rules. You have our support at the library. Go to the Simmons University Library homepage where you can chat, call, email, or meet by video. Talk to you soon.